Hello, my name is Chris Woodward and I am the Developer Relations Engineer at ArangoDB. Thank you for joining me for another ArangoDB 3.5 Feature Introduction video. In this video, we'll be looking at K shortest paths. For today's example, we will solve the problem of finding the quickest train routes between cities in Europe. K shortest paths allows for finding a list of the shortest paths between two documents in a graph. K shortest paths computes all paths between the source and destination in increasing weight and depth, and then returns the paths starting with the shortest first. Up until now, ArangoDB has supported finding a shortest path, but this was limited to returning only one result, just one shortest path. K shortest paths attempts to return every path between the start and end point. With many graphs, this could end up returning a lot of results, so limiting the number of paths returned is highly recommended. The syntax for K shortest paths is very similar to the syntax for shortest path. The main things that change are the number of variables declared with the for statement and the keyword changes from shortest path to K shortest paths. As a refresher for those already familiar with shortest path and as an introduction to those who aren't already familiar, let's take a quick look at the syntax step by step. We start our query with a for loop where we define what the path variable will be called. This is followed by in and then the direction in which the edges should follow. The standard options of outbound, inbound, and any are available. The direction is followed by k shortest paths. Next, you must supply the start vertex, followed by the to keyword, and then the destination or target vertex of the traversal. Just like in a normal graph traversal, you have the option of using either a named graph, which would mean supplying the graph keyword, followed by the name of the graph you can use, or you can use anonymous graph by supplying a set of edge collections. Next is options. The same two options are available with K shortest paths as are available with shortest path, the weight attribute and default weight. Defining these gives you the option to customize how the shortest path is determined. This means rather than just using the number of nodes it takes to get from the start vertex to the target vertex, the traversal will instead evaluate each edge document using the attribute you supply. For the upcoming example, we will use this option to show this in a bit more detail. The default weight option is for when a document does not contain the attribute that you supply with the weight attribute option. The default weight will be what is used when a document doesn't have the attribute. Normally, you will supply a fairly high number here because of the uncertainty that a missing attribute might bring to your results. If you don't supply a default weight, it defaults to 1. I will also use default weight in our example. Next is limit. Even though limit is optional, it is highly recommended to use as returning every path in larger graphs could result in long running expensive queries. You just supply limit followed by a number, which can be thought of as the K number of paths you would like returned. Lastly, the path variable is available to be returned in the return statement. With k shortest path, the path variable contains the edges and vertices of each path, as well as the weight value for each path. For this example, I will be using a very simple graph that shows some train connections in Europe. I will start with creating a graph in the web view and name it train graph. The train graph will have collections named connections for the edges and then the vertices will be in a collection named places. Once that is created, I will create both of those collections, making sure to specify that the connections collection is an edge collection. And then the places collection is a standard document collection. Now we can run two queries, 
I have provided each query in the description below so that you can just copy paste these. The first one inserts the documents into the places collection, and we only specify the key value here. The second statement is for the connections collection, which indicates where each edge should go to and the travel time that it takes to go between stations. With our collections created and populated, we can take a quick look at the graph to make sure everything worked. Perfect. As you can see, this graph shows all of the stations connected by routes to and from them. A small adjustment that you can make is to specify the edges should be curved and labeled with their travel time attributes. With that change, loading the full graph makes it a bit easier to visualize what's happening in the graph. For our query, I would like to find the shortest paths from Birmingham to St. Andrews. To start building out the query, we start with the for statement followed by our variable. K shortest pass emits the full path, so I will just name this variable path. And since we want train routes from Birmingham to St. Andrews, my direction will be outbound. Follow this up with the K shortest paths keyword, and then our start vertex, which is places slash Birmingham to places slash St. Andrews. For our graph, we named it train graph. Let's see the results without options for now. I will use limit here. Although limit isn't necessary for our small example, it is usually a good idea when querying real world datasets. And finally, we'll return the path variable. The visualization shows us the different routes from Birmingham to St. Andrews. If we switch over to the JSON view and collapse the edges and vertices, we can see the weight variable for each path. As you can see, we have three paths with a weight of five and one with seven. What this is telling us is that there are three paths needed to take five trips to get to St. Andrews and one required seven. So as it stands right now, that means we have a tie for three different paths. Well, the way that we can solve this and start making the results a bit more useful is by using the travel time attribute in our options. We will need to add options to our query and the wait attribute field using travel time. Then we'll declare a default weight of 15. I chose 15 as due to the number of results that we have, adding 15 to the wait score will make any path without our travel attribute be considered much slower and much less likely to be included in our results. We get the same number of results and our visualization looks the same, but let's take a look at the weight values again. I will collapse the edges and vertices again here. Now our weights are a bit more varied. It looks like our fastest path travel time is 6.2 hours and the two next closest routes would take 10.7 hours. Having this sort of information could be helpful if each route had different departure times or costs. This could potentially allow a customer to get these routes and then based on their needs decide which one worked best for them. While the functionality is very similar to the shortest path lookup, being able to get multiple paths when using K shortest paths has the potential to offer some even more useful results throughout your applications. I hope you enjoyed this feature introduction video on K shortest paths that is being introduced with ArangoDB 3.5. If you haven't already, be sure to look at some of the other 3.5 feature videos, including configurable analyzers, sorted search views with Arango Search, Prune, TTL indexes, and stay tuned for more to come. Thank you again for watching and be sure to like this video and subscribe to this channel to stay up to date on the latest content from ArangoDB.